Hey everyone, welcome to Tech Down Over. I'm Rick Zanotti and I'm joined today by my good friend down under, Jeff Lantard. Jeff, how are you? Good, thank you, Rick. And just going into autumn here and it goes from summer really hot and now down to wet and autumny weather. Or oh, fall, next week, by the way, we change our time. Well, actually, this week, this Saturday, we change our time to spring forward. Mm. So we're going to be, so. we're going to lose an hour this weekend. And we're, uh, we're not well falling back until the end of the month. So we're yeah, still we used to do that, but now we're at the beginning. And uh, on mm. the video switcher and joining us also on the show, we've got Harold Mugliotti. He'll be with us in a moment. Here we go. This show is sponsored by Relate Corporation at www.relate.com. Your training and video partner. Hello, I'm Peter Baker. Please visit voiceovermasterclass.com to see details of the training courses I have on offer for new and existing voice talents to further their career by enhancing voice and technical skills as well as essential marketing tips. You know, Jeff, you've got to imitate him. I you have, can, I do. I do I? you try to imitate him? Because you, you, I, <laughs> to me, I, I hear a similar tone of voice between you two. Oh. Well, hopefully, because he's got such a wonderful voice, and to be able to read any sort of news on the BBC, he must have a good voice. Uh, because yeah. uh, the, 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 don't like uh, the, don't just take anybody on the BBC. No, and to he's read been doing this what thirty, forty years. He's he's been doing Ooh. it for a very long time, and you know, like he says, he goes, "I don't have an incredible voice. I just know how to read correctly." Mm. And that's you, that's that's trick is is how to read the script and, yeah. and get through because some people have got a perfect voice but they just can't can't say it correctly it's also very personable very nice guy um mm. anyway well it's been another week of crazy shenanigans around the world pandemics and all other stuff going on you know it's affecting the the camera and photo industry quite a bit i was talking to um, our rep from from our local re reseller, Sammy's Camera, and he said it's very hard to get parts right now. Parts for cameras, cameras being shipped. There's a lot of delays. Uh, Apple announced a seven month wait to get an iMac. That's mm. gonna that's gonna kill iMac sales. People are just gonna go to Windows at one point if they have no other choice. Uh, if you're new to an Apple, you probably will go. I don't want to wait. I'll just get something else. If you're not, you may wait or you're just going to go, what do I do? My, my, what happens if your iMac breaks or something like that? You can't get parts. The Mac Pro, they said they can't get parts. They're talking, and that just got released. They're talking about um, the iPhones. There's something like 30 million iPhones understocked right now because they do something like about a million a day. They sell 360 million iPhones a year. That's a lot. of. That's about a million a day. And Foxconn isn't putting them out right now. They're very behind. And Customs is holding everything back. Well, not Customs, but maybe in, in China. They're not shipping stuff. It's uh, oh, yeah. Canon. Canon closed five plants, I believe, uh, in Japan that made cameras. They, they assembled. And now, all the parts were not from China, but about 50% were. So they can't finish new cameras. Uh, they said mm -hmm. supplies of the Canon 1DX Mark III, the brand new one, are very hard to get. So there are some cameras that came to the U.S. They've been already bought out. No, uh, maybe maybe B and H or someone has them. Most people don't have them anymore, and very few in the wild. So it's it's affecting that industry a lot. The video camera parts, computers, phones. All of those are being affected pretty heavily by lack of inventory. Yeah, and I think uh, Sony's, uh, you know, they have that the, their next generation of their Alpha cameras. They're they're mm. being delayed because they're they have a lot of the parts coming from China. So are that's, these the ones uh, that were announced already, or yeah? Oh, they are. Hmm. Yeah, is that happening in Australia too? Yeah, well, we're, we're starting to find find things like that, but it's uh, more so the panic buying of things that they really don't need to panic buy toilet tissue so, yeah <laughs> yeah well like toilet tissue toilet mm -hmm. paper that they're all madly going out like i was saying before the show we had an incident yesterday where somebody got tasered because, while trying to get the toilet tissue because there was 
a few left to somebody that's hated them. So oh, gosh. I thought that's just crazy. But so I suppose when it gets to that, things like a, a camera not being available is the least of their problems. But things yeah. like you said with the iMac, there was talk of a, a new iMac this year. But I oh. would, if they're having delays, the more than likely they will put that off until next year. Because why bother putting why bother putting something new out if you can't get it to market? And like yeah. as I said, we're in we're in nearly April now, mm -hmm. so March nearly April. So if this just get better and everything wraps up well nothing will be back to normal until you know november for shipping for making these things so yeah. there's no point putting a new one out until hey let's wait until we can you know yeah. get this new model and have it out like that and have tons of it available well japan said that they may cancel the summer olympics <clears throat> and move them to the end of the year that is mm. a pretty dramatic that's never happened if, i think we've had canceled olympics but never moved six months or five months that again, because they're they're very afraid of of if this continues, the amount of infections could be humongous at a place like the Olympics. So, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to end soon. But on the other hand, we don't know. Nobody knows what the real numbers are. A friend of mine knows people in China. He called his friend in China, and his friend said it's four times more than they're saying at least. So that means mm -hmm. it's half a million people and something like twenty five thousand dead. Uh, or a hundred thousand dead. That's a lot of people, and but nobody knows. There's so much misinformation and disinformation. It's uh, it's definitely a problem. And you know, it's funny. I read a couple of pandemic books recently, and I'm like, huh. <laughs> you know, it's, it's too fresh in my mind. Going, I hope this doesn't happen. Those weren't very good books, in terms of outcomes. But one was by A. G. Riddle. And it's a great book, and, and I've talked to him a couple of times via emails and stuff. A.G., uh, Jerry Riddle, he's a really good guy, um, and he wrote one called Pandemic. Excellent series. I think it's a series of three books. They're really f good reading, very exciting and fun reading, but that's possible that something like that could happen. And if it does, hi yeah, yeah. And the thing is, with the world today, with electronics and, and all, uh, you know, with, with things shipping all around the world like say just 20 30 years ago very few people went in the, you know out of the country and that around yeah. the place or and that but now people are going weekly so there wouldn't but nobody would go 30 years ago over here to america for a week and then back again no. it would only be on a holiday but now there's people you know they might start the week off in america and end it off in europe mm -hmm. and then back again and so they're all over the place so the, and you get on a plane or a ship they just spread because of the air condition like we've always known on a plane whenever you go on a long trip you nearly always come back with a cold or like a conference you nearly always yep. get something <laughs> from them because you've got all people mixing together so and like you said with whether there's misinformation or not it's hard for all of authority to keep track they don't know they don't who's know. got it because a lot of people don't report or the <laughs> no uh, they don't just and then so people just, are you can like, only try to contain it so uh, far and I think was it was it you or was it uh, somebody else told me that they showed the doctors going into some uh, building in in China and they they got hazmat suits on and they're putting on their guns and you just go what yeah, are the was, guns I, for? <laughs> that was I was telling you about that. It was just a video I was watching. But and yeah. uh, speaking of the uh, camera companies, I was earlier mm. reading about. Uh, something about Fujifilm, hmm. who is apparently, with the help of the Japanese government, manufacturing an antiviral drug called Avigan that they're using there in Japan to try to treat coronavirus Fuji. infection. Yeah. Are they a pharmaceutical I, company too? I guess. I, I, huh. It's it's Fujifilm, so I mean... I. <laughs> that's weird. It's there. I don't know. That's weird. But <coughs> hmm. it, I'm not sure why why they are, but... Yeah, I guess their and their stocks taking a bump up after <laughs> they announced that. <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh, we did have a funny thing here. There was a, a photo on on the social media about you know people buying all the food, and there was a picture in the supermarket where all the all the meat and all the things were gone. Was gone, but there was a section there that had abundance, not a thing touched on it, and it's got a sign that says, "See, nobody nobody wants to eat vegan." It was all the vegan section. <laughs> <laughs> Still yeah. left. Everything else was touched, but the vegan <laughs> section, yep. complete all the meats and all that. Said, <laughs> yeah. said in a crisis, nobody wants it. Well, <laughs> what thought, I want to see is somebody comes out and says, the only thing that'll save you from this virus is gluten. 
Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, because everybody's saying gluten free. Oh, oh my God. Just saying I have, everybody oh, thinks they eat. have celiac disease. It's like, yeah. what you makes you think it. that? Well, I read about it. I hate gluten. People are nuts. Well, you know how you know how a lot of businesses have a uh, posters on the wall that says no cash kept on the premises overnight. Yeah. There was a firm here had a big sign and it was no toilet paper kept on the premises overnight. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, now, anyway, interesting enough that we were talking earlier about cameras, and my wife came up mm. to me yesterday and goes, "I want to learn photography. I want to. I, want, I don't know what you guys are doing." And I'm, I'm like, I "Want to learn photography? Okay." So I was looking around for cameras to get her, and I, I found one. I, I, I was going Canon. I decided I'm going to go Canon. We already have Canon cameras, and I thought of Panasonic, but they're just different enough, and the menus are just more complex enough that mm -hmm. I go, and I should do better with a Canon. So I looked around, and I got her the Canon SL3. It won't show up till next week, but mm -hmm. the Canon SL3 is one of the um, Rebel line of cameras, but it's kind of a separate line. It... It's got really nice video features. It is a replaceable lens camera. I think, uh, were you showing pictures of it? Or Yeah. There you are. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, it also is a mirrorless camera and a DSLR. The mirrorless, when you, remember you look through the, the back screen, the, the live view, it's mirrorless. And it has pretty good focus. It's got the dual pixel autofocus. But not in 4K. In 4K, you get Panasonic focus, which means contrast detection <laughs> not as good as panasonic mm. um yeah. so because it's a small camera the camera only costs 549 dollars so that's a pretty cheap camera for what you get uh it's fully manual fully automatic however you want it. it's got all the shooting modes 24.2 megapixel it uh it's a single card but that's no biggie and it, it comes you know the stm lenses the efs lenses aren't that expensive so I think I got three lenses for for about the average of about three four hundred dollars, uh, and one of them was the one Jeff Holbrook talked about last week, which was the twenty four mm -hmm. millimeter. That sounds All like right, a nice okay. lens. It's an STM lens, a stepping motor lens, and it's got a pretty good. It's got a bit of a crop. So at one point six crop, it's almost a forty millimeter. Not bad. That's a pretty good. It's a little bit bigger than the thirty five millimeter, which is like the perfect shooting lens for video. And I got the Nifty 50 Canon for you know, 50 mm -hmm. millimeter, and it, I think the kit came with a 18 to, one, to 55, 18 to 55, which is something like a 40 to, or 36 to 110 or something like that, 100, mm. maybe 80, I can't remember. Um, and so that gives you a pretty good range for, for zooming, and... On the whole, they said it's a great travel camera. I, I watched uh, Dave and Evelyn's podcast. I watch uh, I watched the guys from uh, DP Review, Chris and Jordan, uh, and a whole mess of others, including uh, uh, Lang Gordon Lang. He did a good review on it. They all like it. They all said it's a lot of fun to shoot with, and the quality of the pictures and video are 1080 is excellent on it. It looked really good. Eh. 4K looked okay, but it was pretty cropped in. It was it was tight, uh, so not bad. Not a bad little camera. It's probably a good learning camera. It looks like fun to use. So, well, the thing is, when you we're looking around for a camera, that's where Canon has it over everybody mm -hmm. else. Is if you're undecided, you just cannot never go wrong with a Canon, no matter what your feelings are about all the other brands. If you don't know what to do, if you stick with a Canon, you know you've got a decent thing anyway. So that's yeah. what gets them and. and you always never. You, I don't think anybody regrets. Oh, I should have gone to Panasonic, or whereas quite often people say, "Oh, I should have gone the the, the Canon because I've been around so long." Yeah. Not that the other ones are are any worse or that, but uh, right. like you said, with that one, it's for such a cheap price. And it I know such a, a lot for your money. Yeah, and and also with with Canon, they had one thing on this one on the SL3, which I didn't like. I was looking at it, and they had a white background, and I was like, Ugh, on the live view for the menu and stuff. But then you look, and they have a classic mode, and it puts you back in normal Canon oh. menus, which are inverted mm. and real easy to see. So yeah. I go, okay, good. I almost didn't buy it when I saw the white background. I go, that looks awful. Mm. It's hard to read. Um, and they had like gray letters on the white background. I go, hmm, that's not really good. 
But fortunately, but did I see correct? Did I see correctly on that shot that you can also get the camera in white as well? Wasn't yeah, you can. A lot of the re rebels give you color options. Yeah, I, I didn't you tell us you can get in white. I, I got it in black. No, I don't. I don't think. It, to me, it's got to be black. But it just looks just doesn't look right. It looks cheaper no, to me. In, it, in does, white than it, it does. It does. Well, it was a. Uh, who is it that we? I think we were talking about this with Dave Mays last time, right? Mm. Where we were talking about how. The the cheaper the camera, the more color options they give you. I know. You know when you start getting to the the really small point and shoots, they'll give you red, they'll give you pink, yep. they'll give you blue. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, I know the yeah. pe the people they're aiming it at are the people, the younger people who might have that money that will mm -hmm. want the colors, whereas the the people who are, have the higher price cameras don't care. They just want the black. They want the camera. They're not worried about the, the features. Yeah. But others, <clears throat> I want a camera, but it's got to match. The handbag or something like I know. that or the clothes <laughs> yeah yeah or the, now, uh, the color of the car <laughs> and another thing we wanted to talk about today was the Lytra torch i think we talked a little bit about this in a previous show but if you look at this shot right here this is i'm looking right now at the canon c200 mm -hmm. and there is a tally light on top of it not really mm -hmm. we put a light it's a Lytra torch l-i-t-r-a Lytra torch and it's on top of the handle the of the, and which just tells me, because it's a little dark right there, it's where we're looking, there's no light in that part of the room. So to me, I can see the outline of the, of the camera, but that tells me exactly where to look at. And it, it's magnetic, so it just magnetically just touches the handle mm. and sticks on. We used it the other day, we had a, a set of interviews in here, and we used it on the door frames, we used it on a window frame to put lights there so the people interviewing yeah. could look at the actual light and not miss where they were supposed to look at it's it's a very functional light and it's so small it's it's very easy to recharge it's magnetic so you know, all you need is a, i think it's a micro usb to charge it uh it holds charge seven to eight hours i think at the lowest i think it'll hold seven or eight hours and i think it holds like an hour and a half if you go really high and really high is blinding it's a fun light and if you're in an emergency it has a flashing light so that somebody oh, might okay. spot you uh so if very, you're too high on a building the planes yeah, won't hit you very cool light you can see it over there uh it's the one on top of the handle i have a slightly closer picture of what it looks like too there you go yeah. and it's i think it's 90 bucks it's about 89 90 dollars for this and it's really well built it's a, it's of good construction mm. we have this the larger lytras which are called lytra pros i think and those are nice too, but they're a little bit bigger and they're not magnetic. So this, just for multiple uses things, if you want to even do like spot lighting or just give accent lighting to something, you can put that anywhere and have a source of light going up, down, sideways. They're very cool lights. They don't have the bigger version called the Hevtro, do they? No, they have a Lytra. <laughs> What's a, yeah, the Hevtro. The Hevtro, yeah. <laughs> they What's, do have a studio size one that's just called one. the Lytra Studio. The Lytra Studio, which is a little bit bigger, but it's multicolor. It's RGB. So but it's just amazing, though. It's just amazing these lights, though, that, that little ones like that do just as much as, like, I've got these, the, the old fluorescent ones, some the, in the big big ones, they do better than that, and at a cheaper price as well. Yeah, it's just I know. quite amazing how in such a short time we've come from these big lights where well, anybody can have these little ones, and they're just not in the way at all. And, no. and, and compared to fluorescent lights, you don't have to worry about accidentally dropping them and getting a bunch of mercury dust all over the place. Mm. <laughs> mm. Well, I've replaced mine, actually, my MIG. I've replaced the fluorescents. I think I put LEDs in. Yeah. yeah I've put um, LEDs in them now. So I have those, basically all LEDs at home, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got the look of the fluorescent. It's just the casing where the fluorescence used to be. So, yeah, it's it's interesting, but that kind of light is so cheap compared to you know for what you get. It's very bright lights, and they do wonders. Well, this light, the big one that we have here, that's the Aperture One Twenty D, I believe, Mark II. It's the second well, version of it, and you know, they're not that big. They're about the size of a camcorder. But the actual light itself is about that big. It's like a square mm. uh, with, I don't know, what does it have, like three or five LEDs? If they're, they're called chips on board. Mm -hmm. uh, so COB, chips on board. They're very, uh, if you put that at full volume outside without the diffuser, it looks like a diesel train is coming at you. Yeah. It's that bright. But the thing is, with, 
The thing is, I like with that one though. You can have that big diffuser on it. I know. Have it at the top power in one, and just that's all you need. You don't need three well, state know, anymore. Is, I, I'm it's pretty well lit right now, and that's at what fifty. Right now we have it at seventy four. Seventy four. Okay. You know, also mm. we we have the camera. Well, it's also because it's further up. We mm. also have the ca just camera so exposure settings pretty, um, you know, low. Like. Low. If, if we were to bring up the exposure, then we would be able to have the get away with having the light much yeah. lower and that sort of thing. You were saying, Jeff? Oh, nothing. I was just, that was just Jemima coming coming behind me, you see, but shaking her head. So. <laughs> yeah, I, was showing, uh, I was showing Harold the picture of a collie, a rough Merle, and they are Klingons. If you look mm. at Star Trek and Klingons, uh, do you want do you want to get that picture from Leslie? I think she's here. <laughs> um, I don't know how I would be able to put oh, it. Oh, we won't. Though. It probably won't look. It'll be too bright because it's a calendar. Yeah. But it, it was a Kali calendar, and you look at it, and I swear that's what they used as their idea for a Klingon warrior back when, oh. because with the with the little marks they have and the way they do their mane, they look like Klingons. I thought you was going to say it looks like a tag. We remember there, oh version yeah, of the Klingon. <laughs> with yep, the big. <laughs> I thought, yeah, that looked like a, a very biting. Well, even sort even of the band. little one we got, um, Bonnie. She she looks like a little lion. She's got the mane and she just sits there. <laughs> it's just like okay, lion, got it. And they're from the high. They're the Scottish Highlands, but they said they're not Scottish dogs. They actually oh. came to Scotland from the Romans. I guess it was some kind of Roman dog that hung out with them. I don't know where they actually came from. Supposedly they came, they, they were somehow given to the Romans by Celts and then made their way to Scotland and then they mixed them with other breeds and that's how you got a collie. Oh. Sort of interesting. So Rick, what, what else have you seen? What have you seen this week and that new out that you want to get? <laughs> that I want to get? I haven't seen a lot lately. Mm. That, you know, you know like sometimes you see things and you keep looking. Oh, I want one of them, but it's sort of been a bit slower lately. Just things. There's been a lot of cameras and that, well, but like uh, the I, I would like, Panasonic. for example, I would like a One DX Mark III, but I don't want to spend mm -hmm. sixty five hundred dollars on it. Um, it's it's a nice camera. I've never had one. I don't need one. It's just one of those likes. Mm -hmm. um, if talking anything, I need. Now we don't need anything. I mean we probably should have gotten two of the Canon C200s over mm -hmm. an iMac, but we wound up getting a second iMac, a uh, brand newer iMac, and it's okay. It's okay. I like my iMac, but at work now I have the iMac, and behind me I have my Alienware, so I can switch back and forth. I, the iMac monitor is still better. Uh, if you look mm -hmm. at it as a monitor, it's just a little clearer. The text rendering is cleaner. But the, but the Alienware, God, uh, Harold's been doing rendering for a video that, that we put together. And that's the first time I've heard the Alienware fans all kick in at full bore. Because well, we're mm. converting it from 4K to 1080p. We've got green screen. We've got color correcting, audio, multiple overlays. And <laughs> it is crunching. It's all that, all the mathematical calculations. It's amazing. Um, and it does it in almost real time. Maybe fa well, it's either actually, twice as you know, fast. Or just that one was up around real time. The other two that, because we did like three renders, the other two yeah. were actually about twice real time. Twice real time. So I, things, I think that one I did a bit, little more complex keying and stuff like yeah. that. But yeah. yeah. But it's pretty amazing how fast those things go. Um, yeah. And you won't get that speed out of an iMac no matter what you do because you just can't build it that fast. And... The Alienware is fast. It's got the double water cooling and all that kind of stuff. It's it's nice, but but I, I think, think that's like what the and, and the screen. I think nobody... that's what the iMac Pro. I think that's what the iMac Pro that gets better for is in yeah. the rain. But that's only in the heavy end. If you're doing like what I do, you can't. You know, the other normal iMac is actually faster. Yes. But yeah. It's, uh, it, the, the iMac Pro is slower on normal tasks but faster on the things like the rendering and all that but yeah my concern with the iMac Pro is look. it has no water cooling at all and no it's just they said and you know I I've, I've been to the Apple store and I looked at the at the Mac Pro you can feel the heat coming out of the center it just yeah there may not be a lot of heat in it but there's a lot of heat coming out so if you have it very close to you that's going to get hot um, 
that's the only thing I didn't like about it. It's, it w that was with the older Mac Pro. The new one, I don't know. It looks like it also probably does the same thing. It brings the heat up. So, not sure. I, I looked at the monitor but I've, I've, they have. Hmm? But even then, I've noticed my current iMac, and see, it's still two years old, but still from the previous ones, every now and then you hear the fans ramp up, which you never used mm. to hear too often. Right. But it's every now and then you think, oh, goodness, it's making a bit of a noise, but it doesn't last too long. But uh, No. But again, there's no water cooling in an iMac either. They've no. got good copper pipes, I guess. But, you know, they manage to diffuse heat very well. And it yeah. just doesn't like me sit, sitting in, in a bathtub while I'm using it. It doesn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting hot, so it's <laughs> you know, submerged uh, in the water. Are you guys still hot you over there? Well, it's, it's just turned to, to our autumn, and I was just saying to somebody else, it's really strange in this country. You know, it was summer, 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 really hot, really hot. And then the day it was, oh, it's it's fall, you know, autumn the next day. Just then like that. Then went down to cold and pouring with, been pouring with rain ever since. Oh, how so weird. We sort of go from one extreme to, it doesn't sort of gradually get less and less. Huh. But then again, we might have a nice hot spurt in about April. Sometimes we do it around, we sometimes have a bit of a hot spurt in April, but it's uh, uh, gone down to like it's been 18 degrees sort of constantly, wow. 18, 20, not hey, much Harold, higher than that. But... Yeah. So what do you want? Mm. You mean in, in terms of gear and stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. I guess the one thing that I've been kind of looking at and and uh, considering, I guess not, it's more of a peripheral thing, but uh, J. Christina's uh, focus uh, focus calibration pyramid. Oh, I think that that's kind of cool. Just because like it's, um, I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you don't really need, but... Um, it it just makes makes uh, makes doing that a, a bit easier since he has everything really clearly marked out and and you know he he just has it so that you basically get the pyramid real square with the camera and then you you get uh, it so that it fills up the frame. What, what and does then, he charge for that? Um, I don't remember, but but yeah. And what I mean, is that, Harold? I've never heard of that. So oh, you I've put never it heard in front of, of the what camera is? and it allows you to to really focus well. And to, because yeah, you oh, know, like in your camera settings, you can you, you can set the um, the uh, um, like micro adjustment so so that when the camera auto focuses, you know, sometimes it's a little off, like it'll focus a little too far, mm -hmm. a little closer. So you can just calibrate it that All way. Right. I, I don't think it's very much. It's like twenty five or something. Oh. But I you know I'm just 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 not not sure. I, I'll probably end up getting it, but. I, I don't actually have that many d different lenses to calibrate at the moment, but it seems like a a cool uh, that 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 was something that I've been looking at recently. He makes he makes some interesting products. Yeah, he's he does. got a whole mess of different things, and he's a he's a bright guy. The one the one other thing that he has that I think is kind of neat, but it, it's it's again used mainly for like. Uh, calibration and that kind of thing is he has a uh, bubble level that will slide into your camera's hot shoe oh interesting so you could just look at it on top rather than you know a lot of tripods have it uh on the head of the tripod but it tends to sit sort of right below the camera so it can be sometimes kind of hmm. hard to see well what about what about the the level that comes on the camera yeah i mean there's that too but for certain things then the bubble level is a little it's more, probably better and you know what sometimes the precise. thing on the camera if you're in bright sunlight it's hard to see yeah, it's very hard to it's see. It's hard to like see in sunlight. You on the tripod and that rather than the camera. Yep. And, and quite o quite often on the camera, it's, it's like that sort of thing on the Sony video camera. It didn't have, well, that's what I was disappointed, didn't have that level like you get on the yeah. uh, Panasonic's. Mm. So you don't know you you have to just li line it up properly, but you think it is. But the like on the Panasonic's, you've got the thing, so no, you know it's level on there when you're just hand holding it. But it didn't have that on yeah. the Sony. I don't remember camera, do they, so. if the Canon, if all the Canon camcorders have the digital level. I I'm not sure. I don't do, think so. Sure, maybe yeah. maybe they do now. The newer ones. Not mm. sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if that XA35 had it. I don't think the it's XA35 just th has. Yeah. It's just the thing is you don't realize it, don't know it has it until you hey it's not there <laughs> when you mm -hmm. and then you go looking for it because I know the Panasonic's. I thought I'm sure this had it, but you forget, and you click it off, click the display button, and you press it off, and you forget that you've got it, and then you just keep pressing that button, and it comes back on again. So, I know the panel, yeah. I know the FZ1000, even that cheap one's got 
got that one on it and the the gh5 does have it but the thing is when you when you're out and about you you can't you're usually not looking at that if you've got doing the in video or or whatever it's hard to do and if you've got it on a tripod like you said make sure you level the tripod that's now i like i like your background at. today uh, did you change your background hey no, you... this is natural that is natural this is this isn't green screen. It's just natural background. To, that's today. just his uh, soundproofing. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. I was thinking, I did, just you, got did fed you green up screen it or is it something different? <laughs> I got fed up of green screening. Uh, <laughs> because of, it, it, just got, it just got in the way because I've got next to me, I, yeah, cats here, next to me I've got all my sound booth type thing, mm. uh, uh, yeah. my station where I do my recording, which yeah, I've yeah. got like a hood on that cut, stops the sound, you know, going to the back of it and if i have the other one you, it, it gets into the frame a little bit too much so and now we've it over. we've yeah. also got you in the center of the shot now jeff oh okay because <laughs> before we usually had yourself kind of like off to the side yeah yeah that's right just to do that so and also as well what what like we were saying about things to get what i've had my eye on there's a little vocal booth that you can get it's not a because I'm, my room's treated nicely in that for that, but just there's just that little bit you can hear on it. But there's a, a nice little one that you can put on a tripod. Like, well, I've got my microphone on that just covers over, so it covers the back, and mm. does that little bit yeah. thing. And then if you do want a total thing, it's got a, a hood going over if you want to tote. But I've got enough at the back; I don't <coughs> need that. That's yeah. what I've got here. I've got it sort of like a, a cloth covering over the back but that's quite a good idea these mini and you can take them with you so if you do travel and you are going uh, you know somewhere where you haven't got as much you can stick the hood over and and still get a hmm. a decent sound doesn't stop much of the the sound coming in but i don't care about that it's just so you don't have that that reverb sound right in the room but I'm, I'm looking for but the thing is they're only 399 in america but if i get that it's still about 800 dollars here by the time it gets here, so it's a bit expensive. What, what, brand, what brand was that? Do you remember? It's, I think it's called just Vocal Booth, but vocal it's booth. A, okay. a Vocal Booth. But they look quite good because it just unhooks. The thing is, I like with it. My setup here, yes, it is. It's okay. It works, but you can the other one you can just unhook it, put it away, mm. and then put it back on. It's easy just to stick on the stand, and you've got it's got the thing to stand the uh, your iPad in it, so you. You've got that. You can stand that. You can still do your boom mics. It's got enough room in there to put your boom mics in on how, that. So, how big is the one that you're looking at? Uh, it's just it's just the, the 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 portable vocal booth. It's just not not a full standing one. It's just a stand up one. It's just that area on there. So I don't know if you can find that one, Harold. But it's uh, I didn't quite uh, find that one. But is it is it just like one of the ones that's just a, a little area behind the microphone or something? No, no, no. It's a full enclosed area because they're... Oh, I see. They go, go to Sweetwater. Those. Maybe Sweetwater and type in vocal no, booth and see what they have. It's, it's, it's funny It's funny you should say that, Harold, because I've got one of those ones, but what I'm using that one for now, that thing that just goes behind the mic, mm -hmm. that's actually on top of the mic, over the top, and I've got a blanket over the top of it that covers the back because hmm. they're useless for them because it's more the sound is the one at the back that you're doing. There's not much at the back you need to... Okay. In that immediate yeah, it's just over the top, so uh, maybe I can find it. I'll, I'll just, but it's uh, for me. It's here. It's about uh, oh, what was it? Uh, I think we have three ninety nine American. Hmm. So oh, okay, nothing on. It's just did they have it at Sweetwater? No, I hang on. It's found vo it vocal booth, but vocal booth to go dot com. You'll vocal see that's booth what it to is. Go. Oh, <coughs> vocal Excuse booth. Me go.com and Let you'll me see pull that up. Yep. Yeah, I've got that there, so okay. Yeah, so I've got that, so hang on, let's let's see if oh Oh, there we go. I'm just seeing I've got my see if I can do where is it on this one? Uh uh, oh, there, very there good it is. Oh, there it is. So they show there it. it and... yeah. yeah, go down to the the bottom of the. Oh, the I see. Part. No, go. No, oh. go. Go up. Go up a bit. Go up. Go up. Sorry. Up. Yep. Go up. To the right, right to the uh, producer engineer. That one. Click on that one there. 
and then down the bottom keep going keep going down the bottom up stop go up a bit go up go up a little bit that first one go up it that's like go oh, stop that 399 one, one. I yeah, see. That first so one. So, hmm. yeah see so that one quite good if you click on that you'll get a bigger picture but see hmm. that's the sort of thing that uh if you like i've got the treaty but that's much better because that's the sort of setup i'm using here with a right. made up one but that one covers that but then if you are it happen to be if you move it around where you haven't got any treatment behind you can do the hood over the top of you so but it's still got enough room uh yeah it's got a good of, amount of uh, coverage i see hmm yeah but people buy these so sometimes and expect them to be a, a soundproof room well no mm. it doesn't do much of that it just makes it sound a little bit uh, sound it just a bit stops better. the bouncing think, yeah hmm and that one, I think it's not too small that it doesn't sound boxy either because there's another one out there that's much smaller, but you have to stick your head in it. It would be very claustrophobic. Oh, mm. <laughs> yeah, it probably but gets sweaty in there and all that. That's like the cone of Whereas silence. Whereas that one's good. Yeah, that's right. I always think about that. It's <laughs> 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 kind of silence. <laughs> Yeah, for those, who whoever, were, uh, the, for those who are too uh, young, that was the old Get Smart TV series with the cone of silence. <laughs> and every time they got into the cone, nobody could hear anything. <laughs> and then Mac, Max always used to light up a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. He was coughing and spluttering because all, <laughs> all the smoke kept in there. And, it says, and he, then the chief would have a pipe and he would have a cigarette. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and always get too much on that. <clears throat> well, guess what? We well, are what we just about out of time. Oh, yeah. We that went fast quickly. yeah mm. always goes fast too fast yes so uh, go back out and i think i'm trying hopefully trying to do some more audio recording this weekend so cool something i, I enjoy i love doing my photography but you, you know sometimes getting out and having getting uh, taking photos yeah. where people don't like it photos always off with sound recording if you can do it at home and nobody bothers you yep that's true it's really enjoyable. And there's, a, there's a lot of fun you know for those who haven't tried sound recording or audio recording it's a lot of fun it's it's a lot of fun to get your mics and hear how you sound and work with your voice mm. and just do things to uh, like like Jeff does, he reads books out loud. Uh, yeah, you can sing into him. You can do whatever you want to a mic, and it's fun. It's and and the more you practice, the better you get. So I've just done this week a whole a whole big thing for some vid some work training videos. So mm -hmm. I've been doing something properly as well. So that was good. I really enjoy it when I get to do it for work and something that's you know useful cool. rather than just yeah. for, for nothing. So. It was really good, and I enjoy doing it. People think it's oh, it's like it is hard work, but you went. It's so enjoyable to do. I don't think people think it can be a lot of work yeah. to do. Or, you know, when you're doing audio books and fixing it up, getting rid. But it is. But it's so enjoyable to do. This mm -hmm. I love coming home if I've got one that I've got to edit. Oh, spend an hour doing that, just sitting there. It's great when you've got a, a purpose to do these things. Yep. Yeah, quite enjoyable. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Well, Jeff, have a good weekend. Or actually, you're in your weekend. He's a day ahead of us. Um, have a good rest of weekend. Enjoy the 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 fall day. Looks like Jeff's turned into a still image there. I think Jeff has frozen. He's on his weekend. Hmm. That's what he's happens. still or not? Oh, there you are. Oh, you're yeah. back. And he's oh, probably so just seen the uh, tape speeding up version of yeah, what no, we've no. just said. I'll, you couldn't hear me as well. I thought no? I just sort of I was. Com completely still. I thought, oh, I've frozen there. For a yeah, we thought so, we thought you got disconnected. I went, hmm, gone. Yeah, no, I could see you. You were at perfect time. It was just me that was frozen. That's the thing. Huh. All you were okay. moving. You two were moving. It's just I wasn't. I could see. I could see and hear you talking, but I was just perfectly still. <laughs> could you? Could you hear us? Yeah, it was. You could hear us. It was. Huh. Everything oh, was perfectly normal apart from me. That is. And so weird. I didn't speed up at the end. I just started again. Anyway. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, we'll have a good one, everyone. We will see you next week on Tech Down Over. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye for now. And we are.